So as with all my big controversial videos, I tend to do a video afterwards where I explain my thoughts in a more concise and clear way because I tend to lose my mind and go a little bit crazy. And that shouldn't be a thing that I do, but it's just who I am. And if you don't like that, well then unsubscribe and go somewhere else. A few people have said that to me in my comment section that they're gonna unsubscribe. Well, if you don't wanna see my content, you should have known that I actually do this all the time. This is what I do. I rant and rave. And what I find ironic is that these probably, these people probably subscribed when I was ranting and raving about nvidia but when i was ranting and raving about amd they didn't like that and that's fine that's 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 fanboys for you and that's all right uh, i like to try and stay balanced try and stay in the middle i right now i thought amd were bringing the most value that's why my system is full amd uh you know and i can never back amd i'm sorry nvidia's uh i suppose business practices at all i just don't like the way they operate as a business so other than that that's just me um i always say vote with your wallet and if you don't like the prices of these cards well then don't buy them and if you don't buy them if you buy an rtx 20 to 2070 however you're just perpetuating the same thing what i would say is just don't buy any gpus and i know that's hard for people who wanted a gpu upgrade but like for me i would say buy a used card um if you have to have a card because what you're doing is if you buy an AMD card or if you say I'm pissed off at AMD because they launched a really expensive card and you buy an, buy, then you buy an NVIDIA card, all you're doing is perpetuating the, the same old problem that nobody buys AMD and nobody buys, uh, you know, and everybody buys NVIDIA and you're just saying, okay, that, that the new entry level price of 500 quid is fine. That's that's absolutely fine. You know, 350 to 500 is now the old 200, 200 to 250. That's what it's become. If you don't like that, well, that's that's fine. You believe what you want to believe, but I'm telling you that's fact. That's true. That's where the market is now. Goodbye to the 200 to 250 range. Um, stagnation across the whole GPU stack. Everything you're getting smaller and smaller uh, uh, upgrades in performance, and it's not because Moore's law. It's not because they're getting worse yields and they're getting terrible, you know, performance increases. This is the greatest performance increase AMD have ever had. Not not like in at all time but in the last 10 years this is the greatest performance leap amd have ever had but they're charging you for it and they're charging you a lot for it and me i wasn't asking for 250 dollar uh you know uh 13 what well, 50 50 5700 xt i was asking for maybe a 350 one you know uh, and it wasn't it wasn't because uh i'm going to buy it because i'm not going to buy it it, well, I was probably going to buy it to review it, but like I wasn't buying it for me. It was for uh, everyone else out there. I wasn't doing this video because I was doing this video for my friends and for to keep the PC gaming space alive because I'm terrified that things are going to get so expensive that the general gamer out there won't be able to buy a gaming, gaming card. And that's the fact. Most people buy a $250 CPU and a $250 GPU and put those two together to make a gaming PC that will game at 1080p and will play the most relevant titles at 1080p at above 60 frames per second and you know and genuinely that's usually good for for you know two or three years and those of you who think that you know oh the rx 480 was a great 1080p the rx 480 could do 1440p at launch it was only a year or two later that it began to lose its legs in 1440p but it could do 1440p at launch it was a decent 1440p card now you might think that's insane. You might think that, well, what happens is that because that performance was mid-tier performance, it, it over a couple of years, the game, the PC, the, the card begins to slow down. The 5700 XT can do 1440p quite handily nowadays, right? But in about two years time, it won't do 1440p anymore. And what it, what what AMD and Nvidia are doing is strategically positioning their products because you know both haven't released cards in a long time. People have short memories and they forget. Uh, is that they 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 kind of fool you and bamboozle you into thinking that these cards are now five hundred quid, but they weren't because the the GTX uh, 1060 and the RX 480 they could both do 1440p. They were both mind mind bogglingly fast for mid tier cards, like they were great cards. You couldn't believe how fast they were. They gave you top tier performance from previous generations at a at a, at a low end price. Great, 
But then you look back to stack and you realize that they've always done that. That the mid tier card has always been the one that you kind of, if you wanted, wanted, you had two options, either buy a 500 quid card and get four years out of it, kind of three or four years out of it, or buy a mid, mid tier card and maybe get a year or two out of it and then sell that and upgrade by 200 euro again. This is this is what you, you kept going. And like the, the further up you paid, the less, less kind of time you got out of your card. But if you look at people with a 980 Ti now, they're still gaming happily at 1440p. You know what I mean? They're going to lose that. It's going to go away, but they're still gaming happily at, at 1440p because they bought the fastest. If you look at people buying a, a, a 1080 Ti now, because of NVIDIA's bullshit and lying, the 1080 Ti still looks, comes out smelling the roses. It looks fantastic, but, you know, it's it's not. It's just marketing. It's just the changing of the guard, the changing of the way things work. You know, people have said that it's it's uh captain mcshackon asked me do you, do you know i'm going to open up discord because i don't want to misquote him uh and i just want to make sure that i uh, that i answer this question properly because he asked me to address this argument i'm going to address it now i'm going to address it exactly the way i wanted to address i want i thought i addressed everything in my previous video obviously i didn't i missed a few things but in in my previous video sorry you're going to hear beepity bopping because of uh discord but yeah here we go here's discord uh Right, so I I honestly myself don't mind the price uh, tag too much. Yes, it's basically uh, ass raping the mid range, but AMD has never really made profit too much. Uh, undercutting has never really worked out too well, even even when they were faster. Right, so um, first of all, undercutting has never worked out for AMD, but this was the perfect point where it would work. Right? Because there was so much vitriol and anger be built up because of the RTX changes and the RTX price that it genuinely would have. There's so many people out there who held off on buying an NVIDIA card waiting to see what Navi would be. And all of those people are just going to buy RTX cards now because Navi's too expensive. So, uh, you know, putting that card so close to an RTX 2070 meant that. And I understand the reason for it. Look, AMD are entitled to just say, Do you know what, we're uh, undercutting everybody is not working for us we're just gonna price our cards wherever we want to price our cards and sell our cards at whatever price point we want because do you know what it's never been working for us but this one was the golden opportunity jensen had left the goal open fucked off he was looking at the corner flag try, looking for his jet leather jacket and the goal was open and all amd had to do was smash that fucking ball home and they didn't and they didn't do it and that was my biggest anger and vitriol yesterday was that like this was a golden opportunity, a guilted opportunity for AMD not to come in with a fucking really cheap. I didn't want a two hundred and fifty dollar, uh, you know, seven nanometer product. It's a seven nanometer product. I understand it costs a bit more, and I understand you want to make forty five percent margin. But for me, forty five percent margin. Uh, it, it, these cars are making more than forty five percent margin. I guarantee you they are. And it will come out in the wash eventually. People will find out how much these cards cost. Uh, you can go and get yourself a, a, a silicon die calculator and you can do it yourself and you can figure out what, you know, you can just put in the figures and put in double the area squared because that's what AMD have said. And, you know, then, uh, you know, figure out what eight gigabytes of, uh, you know, GDR6 is. I'm not going to do it for you, but you can do it yourself and then you can go and figure out how much a couple of, um, you know, power delivery, uh, you know, VRMs cost, how much a PCB costs the manufacturer, how much a cooler costs. And you'll figure out that the price is probably around 150 quid for these cards maybe 200 quid max so a nice 350 quid for this card would have been a big l chunk of change for amd and they didn't go down that route they went down the let's make 200 percent uh, let's make a hundred percent profit or 200 or 150 percent profit 200 percent. that's what they went down the road of and like the the 3700 oh sorry 5700 looks like a great card it looks like it handily beats the rtx 2060 and in the current market that looks great and that looks wonderful and it looks really really amazing but the problem is that those two cards the, the 2060 and the 2070 as i've said before should have been 350 to 250 dollar cards and they weren't and because that AMD, because because Nvidia did that, it allowed AMD to come in with the market and go. You know, what? we're just going to undercut these by a little bit, and beat them. And and I knew when AMD had been beating the RTX twenty seventy, I knew when they were beating it, this card was going to cost similar price. Um, and 
you know, for me, I won't want to buy the blower style cooler. If I was going to buy it, I'll want to buy the aftermarket cooler. And for me, buying the aftermarket cooler would lead to a, an aftermarket cooler that's going to cost more than 450. We're probably talking in the 500s to 550 mark. And now you're up with the decent RTX 2070s. And how are they? How is the how, are, how is this Navi card going to compete with these 2070s? I'd be interested to see. You know, uh, it, it, the also the question for me was: Were they using the lower skewed die, the the bad silicon of the 20 series, or were they using the good silicon of the 20 series to compare? Um, and these are questions that will remain unanswered until we see the reviews. Uh, I think the shroud looks great to me. Actually, the more I look at it, the more I like it. I think the shroud, the shroud on the uh, the fifty seven hundred is just a bog standard silver shroud with, with red stuff on it. But the but the XT variant is very very nice. I don't. I actually like the XT variant better than like the like the limited edition one. I think that's a really nice shroud. I I I think that a blower style cooler is shit, and I don't care what you do to the fan fan. I don't care what you do. It's not about the fan. It's about the the, the dimensions of the heat heat sink itself and the heat sink on that. If you look, if you if you've ever taken off one of those shrouds, and I've done it, and um, I I wonder do I have one here just to show you. Uh, do I have one? Yeah, so see this card here, right? This is this is probably the most beefy uh shroud you'll ever see for uh for um sorry I'm just gonna open it oh yes just make sure I can see. Uh, this is probably the most beefiest shroud you'll ever see on on a on a blower style cooler, right? And 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 this this here is all heat sink, right? This whole thing is heat sink. You can see this is this is the fa this is the ha hottest card that ever existed, and you can see the heat pipes, these big feckin' heat pipes. So it's got heat pipes. It's got a huge big uh, vapor chamber kind of cooler thing going on here. This is all part of the heat sink. It is huge. It's from there to there. That's the size of that heat sink, right? It's huge. But if you ever open up an, an, an actual AMD card and you look at what size the the, the actual you know uh, fin stack array is inside it, it's about it's about from here to here to here to here. It's like it's like a deck of playing cards or a box of cigarettes. Imagine that. That's what that's what the size of this the the a little bit taller, but about about that dimensions. And you can't like surface area is everything when you're trying to kill something. So. The fact that this card has a huge surface area, huge big uh, heat pipe array, and it delivers all of this to the to the to the to the fin stack, which then blows air over it. When when you look at these other ones, they don't have any heat pipes; they just have a big, huge copper plate. It's a vapor chamber, and then you've got all these fin stacks on top of it, and then the air blows over it. It's a great design for putting in putting in system integrators, builds, and all that kind of stuff. But, but regards. At an actual gaming GPU that you're going to want to overclock or whatever, it's not going to work. AMD have limited the, v the how AMD have made this blower style cooler quiet, by the way, and and by all reports it's going to be quiet. Is they've limited the RPM of the fan, so by limiting the RPM of the fan, you can very clearly say that unless the seven nanometer pro process is gold dust and do, dust and doing magic things to TDPs and and you know then cooling then cooling like 180 watts uh of heat dissipation with a deck of cards uh, is only going to be as good as uh you know an rx 480 which was a disaster the rx 480 in cooling wise was a disaster it was about 84 degrees i never really got it because i didn't really hear it it wasn't loud for me it was loud but it wasn't like annoyingly loud um, but the RX 480, by all intents and purposes, was a loud stock cooler and was pretty hot. Um, like, you know, 82, 85 degrees pretty all the time. It thermal throttled that card. That card got slow because it was hot. And I'm worried that that will happen to these Navi cards as well. These Navi cards should probably be hitting a higher clock speed but because they went with a cheaper cooler. You know, and and it just shot. They've gone for a cheaper cooler. So like either either these cards are I'm missing something, and these cards are way more expensive than I thought, or they're just literally trying to ex extract as much profit as they can out of these cards. For me, I don't think these cards will sell, and uh, you know people will argue with that and fight with that. But think, look at all of your friends and what they game on and what they've previously spent on GPUs and just look at the average, the mean price that they spend. And the mean price they spend is about 250 quid. So uh, unless AMD come out with another stack of cards that are lower than this, well then AMD are not going to be selling any cards. They, they need to come out with something that's going to compete with the 1660 and the 1660 Ti. They have to. The, uh, clearly they've launched these cards at this price because they want to target 
that section of the market you know what i mean and for me i would target it at the 1660 and the 1660 ti because they're 50 cards and it's a home run you'll smash them smash their front door in but this performance now it's it's like where else do you go in performance for me like where do you start where do you slot your performance because uh any faster than a 1660 ti and you're pretty much at a 26 to, to like a 2060 because they're so close in performance so you're gonna go in between there like how do you do that do you know what i mean and uh you know how are you gonna be the 1660 what are you gonna do like you know what i mean well you've got the rx 590 well now you're gonna give you're gonna give me a card that's probably gonna cost 250 quid that just slightly beats an rx 590 well i've waited a year for you to give me a card that just beats an rx 590 like do you know what i mean it's like i've waited for a year for a card that barely an upgrade and costs around the same price and that's what's happened to the gpu market and that's where my vitriol and frustration was yesterday was that this was the thing now i just want to make sure i've, I've answered all of uh even when they were fat, right yeah well like you know people as i said right the the, the whole thing is that uh you know this was an open goal this was the opportunity a lot of amd a lot of nvidia fans were ready to move a lot of nvidia fans were ready to shift because they pissed off all of their home run fans they pissed them all off and this was the golden prime opportunity and there's a lot of youtubers out there who've changed their mind now who don't the the old guard are, are you know all have their vested interests like you know jay's two cents man that guy he loves nvidia and he will always he doesn't know it and he's not biased i think in a nasty way i think he just i think he will always try and find a way for nvidia to be good uh, compared to an AMD card, and uh, like, you've got a whole round of, of new impartial tech tubers that didn't exist before that would put perpetuate this stuff. You know, uh, you've got the likes of me and Moore's Law is dead, and and you know uh, Chris uh, from the Good Old Gamer. We 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 try to tend to be kind of more AMD centric as well. We try to give AMD the time of day, and this was a golden gilded opportunity for for for. A lot of the narrative to change a lot of the look this thing is not hot it's not loud it's very fast it's great whatever um but it, it looks like amd have decided no nah, we'll just stick the old cooler we did on it and we'll just put the price where we like in the market that we're in now we'll just price it competitively in the market that we're in now and that's fine that's a business decision that's absolutely fine and that's that's okay you do whatever you want you price cards wherever you want to price cards and you're you're a company and you and at the end of the day you're beholden to your shareholders and i understand that but it was it was just it was all of these years of waiting for navi to kind of bring balance back to the force the the, the launch of the rtx 2070 um you know and the 2080 and the 2080 ti and seeing that that price gouging from nvidia and then just to see and hope that this was going to bring sanity back and it didn't bring sanity back it just gave you the same more of the same 50 quid off and that was a big letdown and disappointment for me and i know that it was a big letdown and disappointment for a lot of other people because i've seen my comment section there are already over obvious fanboys and they just scream out for you and then there's just people who just read the title and then commented and then didn't watch the video and i understand that as well but then you can see just fucking loads of people yeah too too expensive too expensive too and then you've got the ones that really annoy me too expensive i'm going to buy nvidia and yeah i'm like well okay just keep perpetuating the problem then you know you've obviously not understood the argument the argument is that if you buy a 500 hundred dollar card uh, that used to cost 250 quid well then you're just perpetuating the same problem if nobody buys these cards these are not a success if 2070 is not a success and the 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 uh, 5700 xt is not a success well then what will happen is the next generation around people they'll go well we didn't sell that many cards this time around so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to lower price to make them more appealing because people didn't buy these um but that won't happen and people are impatient and people buy what they want to buy and that's fine do what you want to do with your own wallet i'm just telling you the solution to the problem it's hard and it's long it's like going out for a jog every day it's really fucking monotonous and slow and horrible but it's the only way to fix a lot of times fixing problems are hard do you know what i mean and the way to fix problems by as a consumer if you don't like something is to vote with your wallet and not buy it uh, there's loads of options out there there's the vega 56 and the vega 64 by all means if you follow my guides on how to overclock them will give you very similar performance to these cards and um, i guarantee you that a vega 64 modded correctly will perform very very similarly to a to a, a 5700 xt 
uh, if you do if you want to go real extreme and don't really give a fuck about the lifetime of your cards you can power play mid table mod it and then you're you're just off into the distance like but it's up to you do whatever you want to do but as i said uh, there's 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 uh, 1070 ti's there's 1080s second hand 1080s out there you can get them for 350 you know and these are cards that you can go out and buy today that will perform very similarly to these cards now that are being launched by amd and uh, it will then drive everybody to 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 sense at amd and nvidia they'll just go well we're not selling any cards and um, we can't sell any cards and unfortunately we're going to what we're going to do now and and they're going they're just going to have to drop prices uh, i've seen a couple of arguments of people saying well you know amd have done this so that they can drop prices later well if you're happy doing that don't that do that but if a lot of people buy these cards from launch you know then you've told amd that that price point is fine the next card will launch at that price point uh you know uh like that's that's the main argument i see is like they've they've, they've put this card out for five for 450 quid because they think that um oh by the way i just want to when i say 550 when i say 550 quid i've said this in loads of my videos i mean euro pounds and dollars it's just a way of sticking all of that into it's, it's a way of saying money i use euro i don't use pounds so people stop saying that i don't i don't compare anything to pounds i've seen somebody saying that this is going to cost 350 pounds because what they did is they took the the dollar price and converted it to pounds no this will cost about 420 pounds or 420 400 pounds that's how much this will cost i'd say more like 420 pounds um vega uh, like radeon 7 cost 669 pounds and it, it's msrp was 700 dollars so those of you trying to say that this is going to cost less than pounds no it's not the way it works anymore pounds are too weak uh, you don't get the same exchange rate you used to uh companies like to sell things for more expensive in pounds because they make more margin on them and they will sell them in pounds at nearly nearly price to price dollar to dollar uh but that that kind of annoyed me um you know that i've seen a few of those like people go, oh well you know he's saying quid uh yes you are british and i appreciate that love the british live right next door we're neighbors but the whole world doesn't revolve around just pal right we, we use euro here so when i say quid i mean all monies um because the fact of the matter is when something is set at a, at a 700 dollar msrp it pretty much is the same price everywhere regardless of pounds euros or dollars very different used to be two or three years ago that things were cheaper in pounds well like in, at a lower number in pounds but that was because like the pound was stronger so you could buy more dollars with it but still you were being ripped off you just didn't notice it as much because the pound was much stronger whereas now it's so weak that it's much muchness with them all Um. also we pay vat here so that tends to cancel out the 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 price advantage euro has over dollars so it tends to be just the same in euro so uh, you know 700 dollars is 700 euro that's pretty much sometimes it can be slightly more expensive actually but it's you it tends to be around the same so the new iphone for instance when it came out a thousand uh dollars it was a thousand forty nine here just gives you an example of, of what prices are so uh yeah so if you're somebody in great britain and you think you're gonna get these for cheaper you're not it's gonna be 400 plus um the like the only thing i think is four set 379 will will definitely be 350 so the the 5700 will be 350 and i'd say the for the what you call it the 5700 xt will be around 420 or so um we'll see though we'll see i, I just know how much ready on seven cost and it was 669 so there you go that's how much it was it was msrp 669 <laughs> so uh but uh and and by the way i know that for a fact because all of the other w one places that you could buy them were gouging and i was like holy shit won't somebody it's not gouging, gouging i'll buy that um but yeah so navi big disappointment for me might not be a disappointment for you but if you're okay with paying 500 quid for a card buy these by all means if you want to want things to change go to the used market go buy something different and um, buy a console by all means if you want for a year or two i don't know uh, i just find it ironic that people see that these chip these chips are going to be in the next generation of consoles next year and um, they're probably already selling these these SKUs to to well they'll be selling them pretty soon to uh, microsoft and sony to start ramping up production on on the consoles and um 
you know, they, they're, they're selling GPUs which are going to be more powerful in the consoles than these cards. And they're selling, those consoles are probably going to cost five or 600 quid. And they're selling them bundled with a CPU inside, all a big monolithic die. And they're able to get away with, like, you know, selling us gamers 500 quid uh, GPUs. It's, it, it, I, I don't like it. I really don't like it. And for me, I was just trying to be balanced uh, be as rough on AMD when I think they're doing shit uh, as I am on always on NVIDIA and uh, people didn't like that and I understand the reason why they don't because people like to plant their flags and believe what they want to believe but for me um, it's the death of the mainstream gamer the mainstream ga gaming's going to start dying on PC because it's just getting too expensive and people keep saying well that'll never happen that'll never happen look the people said that Hitler wasn't going to invade Poland and start World War 2 but it fucking happened didn't it yeah it did like peace in our time you know what i mean you can see these things coming a mile off and some people like to dip, dip their head in the sand and say it's not going to happen and other people like to say well it will happen and we're the guys who say i told you so after the shit actually happens and pc gaming is just going to become so expensive that very few people will do it and it'll become a niche kind of thing again it was growing in popularity it, the sales of pc games were overtaking console games but like i can genuinely see the next generation of consoles when they're doing four 4k and and you know whatever and key keyboard and mouse support and stuff and people be like why would i pay all that money for a gaming pc when i can get it in a box and even if they're a grand they still look like a bargain because at the end of the day you're going to spend a grand now for what you used to spend 500 quid for and you know to get what you used to get for a grand you're going to have to spend 1500 2000 this is the issue and if anybody doubts me about the rtx 2070 being a mid-level card rebranded as an upper high ten, high tier card uh chris from the good old gamer actually sent me a message thanks very much chris and he was like just look at the way they're priced and it's the truth uh you know the 1080 ti the replacement for the 1080 ti doubled to what 1200 quid the replacement for the ten, for the 10 1080 doubled do you know what i mean well the 1070 sorry doubled it's 1070 just doubled to 700 800 quid what happened to the 60 card doubled they all doubled and you can see that they're all they're not the highest tier like they're not you know what i mean it's the, the they just doubled prices across the board and because they doubled prices across the board that means that if you double 250 dollars you get 500 nvidia changed the rules nvidia changed the game nvidia changed it for everyone nvidia changed where mid main, mainstream game is going amd scene nvidia selling a card for set for seven for 500 quid that you know they probably could get away with selling them for 300 quid i went yeah we'll have a bit of action and they're entitled to do that i just don't like it and if you don't like it as well hit me up in the comment section um if you do hit me up in the comment section i don't mind uh you know what you think but at the end of the day ryzen is crazy good navi is a bit of a disappointment for me more than a bit of a disappointment it's yeah it's just it's just not what we hoped like if you look at it as a vega replacement it's a big fucking fail right and if you look at it as a polaris replacement it's a big win in performance but the price is atrocious <laughs> like that that's the only way i can say it to you and like like uh you know if you look at this card from a where it comes from vega it's the smallest performance increase we've ever seen full stop there's not like yeah smallest performance increase ever it's about 15 20 percent uh and it's the same price you know after all is said and done you're not going to want the blower style nobody blew the, bought the blower style version of vega so when you look at the aftermarket versions what you're going to get it's going to be about the same price and then um yeah so just by vega in my opinion and if you compare it to polaris it's exactly the same as as a as a 1080 ti like everybody lost their minds when a 1080 when a 2080 ti replaced the 1080 it was 70 percent faster well these are replacing the the rx 580 and they're what like 90 percent more expensive 90 percent more expensive did I say faster? I meant when the 2080 came out and it was 70% more expensive than the 1080 and it replaced it, right? Everybody lost their minds. Now this is now this is 90% more expensive than the, the Polaris card it's replacing. 
and nobody's saying shit. Everybody, all the reviewers are saying, this is great, this is wonderful, this is amazing, 50 quid quid cheaper than the RTX 2070, how amazing is this? Like, and I just don't understand it. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand where people are coming from. For me, maybe, maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Maybe I'm the one that has something wrong with the way I see things. Maybe I do. I don't know. But for me, I, I just I just think this is this is price gouging gouging at its and if you can't sell these cards for, for the price that you should be launching them at, well then wait until the process gets cheaper and launch them then. Uh, if you launch these now, it's just gonna get people are gonna get bad taste in their mouth, people are gonna remember no I've used Big Fat and then they just won't sell any. That's that's the way I feel. And uh, you know, and then eventually when down the road when they drop the prices, everybody's like, Oh you're great and by the time it gets to there, well, we're talking about Nvidia having super out or whatever super's gonna be and, and now the now look stupid again and then they have to drop the prices again they're a price war with nvidia well the only way to get, bypass a price war with nvidia is drop the price of the cards to what they actually were supposed to be costing and if you do that well then nvidia looks stupid everybody go hey, nvidia was ripping us off the whole time this is where the performance level should have been oh i'm just gonna buy amd because at least they don't rip us off whereas nvidia do that would be the way i would i would do it you know the argument that oh well they're just doing it to avoid price wars with nvidia i don't think that washes with me i think that they're doing this because they see an opportunity to make a bank and when when nvidia launch whatever they have up their sleeve they'll just drop the price again and then they'll drop the price again well why didn't they just do, do it in the first place do you know what i mean because nobody's going to buy these cars at 450 quid anyway so they're not going to really sell any so just, just 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 drop the price to where they're supposed to be and and let let, you know people your cards and take the opportunity you have the gilded edged opportunity you have of the whole market going what the fuck's going on here the, the pro, gpu prices have just gotten crazy wait a minute amd saviors of gamers have brought it down every gamer if we were to salt should buy this card this card's crazy fast blah blah blah, blah. remember uh, even though i don't i don't have any love for ray tracing i don't think it should be exist it's not a feature that anybody should use as an argument to beat anybody with this will be used as an argument to beat Navuit. It will absolutely be used as an argument to beat Navuit that, you know, they have ray tracing. And the reason why NVIDIA justified their price increase was by using ray tracing as a weapon. And now uh, AMD are competing on price with a card that doesn't have ray tracing. And it's just going to mean that people are going to go, well, I want to see ray tracing. Like, there's loads of people out there who don't know that ray tracing is not in all games. There's genuinely people out there who think they just buy this, put it on, and it turns ray tracing on in all their games. There will be people out there who do that. They, and they are more common than the people who know what the clock speed of a of a, a RX 2070 is or how much RAM a 2070 is. They, 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 they're more common and they buy more cards. I'm telling you. That's it. Anyway, look, I hope I've addressed everything. I'm sorry I lost my mind yesterday. I was just so fucking disappointed after two years of fucking waiting for something to replace Polaris. Uh, and, and we get, like, it, it, what annoys me is this was a screamer. It's an app. And same with the, the, the same with NVIDIA's cards. They were screamers. Absolute beautiful perform performance. Absolutely beautiful performance. Massive upgrades on the previous tier. But priced like they were replacing cards that were actually higher tier. And because of that, you get lower performance. So that was my issue. That, you know, uh, I think that's the best way to sum it up before I end the video is that before we were looking at cards that would replace the previous generation cards kind of be a little bit more expensive because of inflation and all that kind of stuff and would bring you a 30% performance increase. Uh, this generation realm with both AMD and Nvidia are seeing 60 and 70% performance increases on the tier that they were supposed to be replacing, but then they're priced like the top end graphics card. And because they're priced like the top end graphics card, you're only seeing performance increases of maybe 10 or 15%. So that disguises the fact that, you know, oh, well, these cards are great. Like, you know, you kind of think that they're great, but what they really are is just yeah just the best performance increase they've had each both generation has had uh both companies have had in in generations and they've used it to charge you more money and if we pay it well then we deserve it that's my opinion anyway like it if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it but if you dislike it tell me why dislike it because i can't fix it if i don't know where it's wrong and in the comments let me know what you think and all that kind of stuff and everything and i've got yeah do the liking and subscribing and sharing because sharing is the most important thing it means that people actually see my video it means that i get more views and um, if you want to know why i ask you to share it's very clear the youtube algorithm likes people sharing videos so the more you share my video the more people will watch my video uh, and yeah if you want to help me get a am4 platform and go on to get ryzen 3000 and do a review and all that kind of stuff well i've got a patreon anyway i'll talk to you next one i'll press this button stop record bye 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 bye, bye.